Hey Luke here with castingcarp.com and I'm going to show you my six favorite fish recipes. Now those of you who watch my channel will know that I do a lot of catch and release fishing and I really enjoy watching a big fish swim away. But I was born and raised in Alaska and for many people fishing isn't a sport, it's a way to put food on the table. And I see nothing wrong with taking a fish home as long as you harvest intelligently and leave enough for the next generation. I also find that simply taking home one fish regularly will taste a lot better than taking a whole bunch of fish or one big fish because you have a lot fewer leftovers and you're eating more fresh fish and eating less frozen fish. A lot of these recipes will work great with lots of different types of fish including the classic po'boy sandwich which works good with catfish and other white meat fish, coconut fish nuggets with a mango reduction, then I'm going to show you a smoked fish recipe which works great for salmon and carp and other strong flavored fish, quick and easy fish tacos, and I'm going to show you how to grill fish on a barbecue with nothing more than brown sugar and butter. Super easy. And I'm going to show you how to make my version of southern style catfish nuggets. So first I'm going to show you how to make the best po'boy sandwich you have ever tasted in your life. I'm also going to show you how to make homemade tartar sauce, which is about as easy as putting milk on cereal. Here are the ingredients you're going to need. You'll need finely ground cornmeal, not the coarse chunky stuff. You want nice and finely ground cornmeal. You'll need all-purpose flour. You'll need some buttermilk. You'll need peanut oil. You'll need some really nice rolls. You can buy hoagie rolls or quarter baguettes, but if you want to make the best catfish po' boy sandwiches you've ever tasted, then go to a local bakery, get some fresh made rolls. You want rolls that are just a little shorter than the catfish fillets. Next, get some fresh tomatoes. Not those sad, pale tomatoes you see in the grocery store. Get a fresh, off-the-vine tomato that's deep red and plump and juicy. I love to put fresh cilantro on my po' boy sandwiches, so grab a bunch of fresh cilantro too. Greens are an absolute must on a po' boy. I love butterhead lettuce. The locally grown butterhead lettuce you see here was about half the price of normal iceberg lettuce, and it tastes so much better. Mixed greens are also great on a po' boy sandwich. If you can't find butterhead lettuce, you can use just the greens. Of course, you're going to need some catfish fillets. Make sure they're all deboned and of course skinned. I like the fillets to be only slightly longer than the buns and about an inch thick. A four pound catfish uh, does a great job or about a half pound fillet seems to be just about right. If you want big sandwiches, I do one fillet per sandwich. You also want some plain old table salt. For seasoning, you want a little bit of classic Old Bay seasoning. For the tartar sauce, you can buy it pre-made or you can make your own. Homemade tartar sauce only has three ingredients. Real mayonnaise, sweet relish, and lemon juice. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you do is get the peanut oil heated up. Select a pot that is wide enough to fit your fillet in and deep enough that the bubbling and sizzling won't slop oil out of the pot. You use about half a gallon of oil or about an inch to an inch and a half deep of oil. You want the oil to be about 350 degrees. This will be a medium low heat and it'll take about 10 to 15 minutes for it to heat up properly. While you're waiting for the oil to heat up, let's make the tartar sauce. Take about one cup of mayonnaise and add about six tablespoons of relish. Then add about two tablespoons of lemon juice. Mix it all up and you're done. You can adjust the amount of juice and relish depending on how smooth or tart you like your sauce. Next, let's measure out two cups of cornmeal and then add it to a shallow dish that's just big enough that fits the fillets. Then we measure out one and a half cups of flour and mix it with the cornmeal. We want it to be nice and thoroughly mixed up. Then we measure out two cups of buttermilk and pour it into another shallow dish. Now we're ready to soak the fillets in buttermilk. Make sure they are completely covered in buttermilk and let them soak for several minutes. Remove the fillets from the buttermilk and shake off the extra buttermilk. Then roll the wet fillets in the meal and flour until it's all covered in meal and flour. You'll get balls of uh, milk and meal stuck to your fingers. Take one of these dough balls over to the oil and use it to check the temperature. When you throw the dough ball in the oil, it should boil and fizz and take about four to five minutes to turn a golden brown. If it doesn't boil aggressively or if it burns quickly, adjust your heat and retest. Once the temperature is perfect, add your fillet. It should take about five minutes 
to cook the filet. You can tell when the filet is done because the batter will turn a nice golden brown color and the filet will curl slightly on all four sides. Once the filet is done, place it on a paper towel to soak up all the extra oil and this will help keep it crispy. As soon as you take the filet out of the oil, sprinkle it with some of the Old Bay and table salt. While the filets are cooking, get the buns and fixings ready. Cut each of the rolls long way. Cut the tomatoes into quarter inch slices and then sprinkle a little salt on the tomato slices. Once you are ready to make the sandwich, spread a liberal amount of tartar sauce on the bun and add the lettuce, the greens, the cilantro, the tomato, and then top it off with a fresh, hot, deep fried catfish filet. Right there, that's a perfect catfish po' boy sandwich. Mm. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is how you make an extremely good catfish po' boy, right there. My second recipe is probably my fanciest. It's coconut deep fried fish nuggets with a mango reduction. Now, if you have somebody who doesn't like fish, if you have a fish that's a little bit uh, unusual, or if you just want to impress a woman and make her think that you actually know how to cook, this is your recipe. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is get a thing of that naked juice, the mango puree, the real thick stuff. Put it in a pan and start boiling it. You're going to get the water out of it to make it nice and thick. So that's called a reduction. So basically just boil the juice down until it's really thick. And that takes about 30 minutes to an hour. Then add a little bit of red pepper. I'm not a, much of a spice guy, so I just put a few dashes. But if you like spicy stuff, you can add more. Then some ground cumin, and I go a little bit more heavy-handed with this, uh, a spoonful or so. Then three or four bay leaves, and uh, throw that in there and let them simmer for 30 minutes, and that'll get a really nice flavor in the sauce. And then you want some ground cloves. A little goes a long way, so just a pinch or two. Um, and you just kind of do it to taste, you know, depending on your preferences. I eyeball it and do it a little differently each time. But if at any point, if you're doing this and you think, you know, I've overdone the spices, add a little heavy whipping cream and it'll cool the spiciness down and uh, kind of make it a little bit more mild flavored. So that's how you make the sauce. And once you've got your sauce done, start cutting your fillets up into chunks. If you really like fish, if people, if it's a really good fish, use bigger chunks. If people don't really like fish that much, do smaller chunks. But take a bowl full of these fish chunks and cover them in buttermilk. Marinate them. Uh, for anywhere between 5 to 30 minutes at least. But if you want to let it sit overnight, it's not a big deal. But this helps take some of the fishy flavor out and uh, makes it a real smooth flavored meat. Then take a pan, add some peanut oil. You want about an inch and a half of oil and put it on a low heat, usually like a number two setting. Then get some tapioca flour or rice flour, put it in a shallow bowl. And this is uh, also going to be combined with coconut, the sweetened coconut shavings, about one to one and uh, then you're going to add some eggs to it to make it into a runny batter. You can also add a little bit of sugar to sweeten it up, but uh, you want it to add in just enough eggs to it that it really gets runny. And you use a different number of eggs each time because they're different sized eggs, but I use about six eggs for this. And uh, you want it to be a real nice runny batter like, like what you see here. The consistency is important, so not too thin, not too thick. Um, but runny, but still kind of thick. Then take a, uh, another pan and add some bread flour or all-purpose flour to it and uh, make a little assembly line. You take them out of the buttermilk, you roll the fish chunks in the all-purpose flour, and you roll it in the batter, and then you put it in the, the pot to be fried. And uh, once the oil's up to temperature, it should take about three to five minutes to turn it into a golden brown color. And that's perfect. You don't want to overdo fish. So you want it just about three to five minutes in the oil. And that's perfectly cooked for fish nuggets this size. If they're thicker fish nuggets, you might need a little bit more time. But uh, these beauties just taste so good. And uh, you can eat them as is, but that mango sauce is fabulous on top of them. And we just go and, and uh, drizzle some of that mango reduction on. Often serve it with uh, rice. Very good. So, so what do you think, Becca? You like it? It's really good. Yeah, oh, good. It's gone. I ate it all. It's really good. Oh, well, excellent. Excellent. 
For my third recipe, I'm going to show you how to smoke fish. Now, this is great if you have large quantities of fish or you have a strong flavored fish. I like to use this for trout, salmon, and carp. All smoking recipes begin with a brine, and I like to use a teriyaki base. So you take a gallon of soy sauce, about a pound of ginger, cut the ginger really thin, and boil it in the soy sauce. Then uh, get about oh, 20 cloves of garlic, crush them, throw them in there too, uh, and then add about four cups of sugar. Boil that up, and once it's done boiling and simmering for about 30 minutes, add about a gallon of cool water to cool it down so that it's no longer scalding hot. Once that, that's done, you can take out the ginger and the garlic chunks, and then your brine's done. As you can see here, I like to smoke all my leftover fish. If I catch a lot of fish on a trip or I have a lot of leftover fish at the end of the season, I like to smoke them because you can do a large quantities. So just take the chunks frozen or thawed and submerge them in the brine and let them sit at least overnight. Then you take and put them in the smoker. In this case, I've got my file cabinet smoker here. And you can see I've got two layers of uh, smoked salmon on each drawer. Put in some applewood chips and smoke it for anywhere from 18 to 24 hours, depending on the ambient temperature. I like to keep the temperature around somewhere between 125 to 150. And when it's done, it should look like this. And you can make it either more like jerky or you can have it really soft and juicy. And you can, depending on your preference and how long you stick it in the smoker and the heat, you can affect the texture. And the drier it is, the more like jerky it is, the longer it'll last and the uh, longer it'll taste good. Softer stuff tastes good too, but you got to eat it quickly or refrigerate it more or quickly. Um, but just absolutely delicious and it makes tons. And so all my neighbors get smoked fish. And I like to eat smoked fish on crackers with a little dab of homemade jam. But it also works good as a cheese dip or in pasta. Okay, enough fancy pants recipes. Fish tacos will work with any type of fish and they're super easy. Okay, set your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and marinate some fish chunks in buttermilk just like we did in the other videos. Once they're done marinating, put them in a pan and you're going to cover them in Lenzano salsa. This is a Costa Rican salsa that you can get on Amazon.com. I'll put a link in the description. It's mind-blowing. It's awesome. This salsa tastes like no other salsa on the market. And it's not spicy as in hot, but it's very, very flavorful, very pungent. Um, it's, it's absolutely awesome. It goes great on all meats. At any rate, put that in the oven and let it bake for about 15 to 20 minutes and then get the rest going. Take your lettuce, smash it on the cutting board, and pull the stem out. It's brutal and effective. Then uh, cut up the lettuce into thin little shavings, and uh, there you go. Nice and easy. Just don't cut your fingers off. Uh, that that happens. Um, but yeah, you can use iceberg lettuce, butterhead lettuce, you know, any sort of greens you got in the uh, the fridge. Chop up some onions uh, as fine as you want. Uh, if you like onions, use bigger chunks. And then chop up some garlic or crush the cloves of garlic with the flat of the knife. Um, once you've got that, we're going to sear and cook the garlic and the onions and just a little bit of olive oil. Just heat it up, put it in a pan, and this is called sweating the onions. Just you cook them until they turn limp and translucent. And you got the garlic and the onions in there, and just searing it around. Once they're they're sweated, then you go and I like to add some canned black beans. Um, fresh beans are, are better, but you know whatever. This is a nice easy recipe. And all you're doing is just heating up the black beans. You're not really cooking them. You're just heating them up. Then I go to the rice cooker and any leftover rice I got, that goes in there too. Um, so this is really kind of a take all your leftovers and, and make something out of it sort of recipe. Uh, throw in some, some rice, mix that up. And uh, you can put all sorts of things. Cilantro tastes really good uh, in this. Uh, you can take all sorts of herbs, little uh, bits of salsa. I've got some diced toma canned tomatoes. I drain the juice off, throw that in there. Kind of anything that sounds good on a taco, throw it in the pan, get it all heated up. You're good to go. And it just kind of makes this little uh, hodgepodge mix that tastes pretty good. Um, kill the uh, heat. But this is, like I said, I, I used all just stuff that was in the fridge anyways. And I think this entire recipe takes like 15, 20 minutes. Really easy to put together. Once the, the fish is all cooked the way through, you're ready to go. And then you just make some tacos. So 
I just put a little bit of that, a little bit of meat, <laughs> and my uh, son Nathan trying to steal off my taco. Put a little bit of mango salsa, Paul Newman's mango salsa on there. It tastes really good with that. A little bit of cheese. Voila. Mm. It's good. If you want to grill a really tasty, sweet, fresh fish, don't overthink it. I've got some fresh trout here. Me and Tommy caught it on a trip to England, and so I bust out my mama's old recipe for salmon and halibut. Um, it's simple, just one part melted uh, butter, one part brown sugar. Just mix it all together to form this kind of little syrupy paste, then cover the barbecue grill in tin foil so it doesn't get all trashed, and put all the fillets skin side down on a hot, hot grill, and then just spoon this melted concoction all over the meat, and you're good to go. And once the fillets start to be cooked all the way through, just flip them. And if they're big fillets, the skin will often stick to the tin foil and just come off. If they're smaller fillets like this, then you just work the skin off with the fork and you're good to go. It's so simple, okay? It's sweet, it's, it's nice the flavor, but it doesn't overpower the meat. And it's just, if you've got a really good trout or salmon or halibut, this is fabulous, but it works on a lot of fish. And that's it. Super easy. Takes only a few minutes. Catfish nuggets taste great and are a great alternative for little kids who might not eat catfish fillets. To make catfish nuggets, you'll need finely ground cornmeal. Not the coarse chunky stuff. You want nice and finely ground cornmeal. You'll need all-purpose flour. You'll need some buttermilk. You'll need peanut oil. Of course, you're going to need some catfish fillets. Make sure they're all deboned and of course skinned. For seasoning, you want a little bit of classic Old Bay seasoning. You also want some plain old table salt. I like to dip them in My Ploy Sweet Chili Sauce, which you can get at most grocery stores and almost all Asian supermarkets. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you do is get the peanut oil heated up. You want the oil to be about 350 degrees. This will be a medium low heat and it will take about 10 to 15 minutes for it to heat up properly. Cut the fillets long ways along the seam. Then cut the meat into one inch strips. Soak the chunks in buttermilk for several minutes, then roll them in the meal and fry them. They will cook faster than fillet, so pull them out after about four to five minutes. Place the catfish nuggets on a paper towel and season them to taste. Now there are millions of ways to eat catfish nuggets, but I dip mine in sweet chili sauce and it blows my mind every time. Mm. That is so good. That is the best little catfish nugget ever. If you like that video, check out some of our other great videos, including how to catch and clean Asian carp and how to build the file cabinet smoker in this video. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe to get new videos every week. Thanks for watching.